Hi everyone. Today we are going to learn about trig identities. We're going to learn how to transform trig expressions. Let's first of all review reciprocal identities. We have learned before that we have three basic functions, trig functions, or they are called sine of x, cosine, and tangent of x. They have reciprocal functions. For example, if I have sine of x, reciprocal of sine of x is called cosecant of x. Because this is reciprocal of sine, I can write sine of x is equal to 1 over cosecant of x. I can also rewrite this in a different form. Cosecant of x equal to 1 over sine of x. Just switch sine and cosecant by cross multiple. So this is what we have. So these are some reciprocal identities. I can also find that for cosine, reciprocal of that is secant of x. So cosine is 1 over secant. I can also write it as secant of x equal to 1 over cosine of x. We also have tangent of x. Reciprocal of that is cotangent of x. Tangent is 1 over cotangent. Or we can also write cotangent of x equal to 1 over tangent of x. Let's talk about quotient identities. We have learned before that if we have tangent of x, that's equal to sine of x over cosine of x. We know sine of x is 1 over cosecant of x reciprocal of that is cosecant of x. And cosine is 1 over secant of x. Let's evaluate this division. We know if we have division of fraction, we are going to keep the first one, 1 over cosecant of x, change the division to multiple, and flip the second one. So it will be secant of x over 1. Now, if I simplify this multiplication, uh, top by top will be just secant of x, bottom by bottom will be cosecant of x. So this is another identity. I'm going to highlight this one and this one, another identity for tangent. The same way we can write quotient identity for cotangent of x. Cotangent is cosine of x over sine of x. Because this is reciprocal, cotangent is reciprocal of tangent, so this sign will be flipped, cosine over sine. And the same way we can solve for the rest, like cosine is 1 over secant of x, this is 1 over cosecant of x, and we keep the first one, flip the second one, and Top by top, bottom by bottom, it will be cosecant of x over secant of x. Okay, so the quotient identities are these. Tangent is sine over cosine or secant over cosecant. Cotangent is cosine over sine or cosecant over secant. Now let's talk about Pythagorean identities. Let me draw this coordinate plane for you. Let's say this is a coordinate plane and we have a we have an angle here. We draw a straight line to make a right triangle. We call the hypotenuse R and the opposite side as Y and the adjacent side of this angle as X. We have learned before cosine of theta here in this triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's x over r. And sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's y over r. On the other hand, in this triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and say that the, the x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. This is Pythagorean theorem. Next, I'm going to divide everything by r squared. So divide all these by r squared. And as you see, I can simplify this in this form. 
instead of x squared over r squared, I'm going to write x over r squared plus y over r squared equal to r squared divided by r squared is just 1. Now, let's go back here. x over r was cosine, so I can replace this with cosine of x. Instead of x over r, I'm going to write cosine of x squared. And y over r is sine. So this is sine of x. Oh, I'm sorry. We It's better if we write it theta because we are working with angle theta. So it's cosine of theta squared, sine of theta squared equal to 1. And we call this Pythagorean identity. Now we're going to change Pythagorean identity in a different form. I'm going to divide everything by cosine squared of theta. Cosine squared of theta, cosine squared of theta. So this was my Pythagorean identity. I divide everything by cosine, cosine squared. So let's see what happens. The first one Cosine squared divided by cosine squared, they cancel each other and we will have only one. The second one is sine squared over cosine squared. I can rewrite this as sine over cosine squared. We all agree with this. If we have a division or a fraction raised to the power of two, we can write it as sine squared or over cosine squared. So I can also go to the other direction. Okay, so this is sine squared, sine over cosine squared. But also, we have learned before that sine over cosine is tangent. So we can write this as tangent squared of theta. Also, the second one is, this was this one, and one over cosine squared can be written as 1 over cosine of theta squared. And we know that 1 over cosine is secant. So I can rewrite that as secant of theta. And we had a power of 2, so secant of theta to the power of 2. So this is another form of the Pythagorean identity. Next, let's do it another time. This time, we are going to divide everything by sine squared of theta. OK, as we divide this, first of all, these two are going to cancel each other. So it will be equal to 1. This is 1. But the first one here, it's cosine of theta over sine of theta to the power of 2. And we know cosine over sine is cotangent. So I can write this as cotangent of theta squared plus this was canceled, so it's going to be 1. And 1 over sine is squared. This is 1 over sine of theta squared. 1 over sine was cosecant. <clears throat> so I can write this as cosecant of theta squared. So this is another identity, another form of Pythagorean identity. We have three of them. Cosine squared plus sine squared equal to 1. 1 plus tangent squared is secant squared. Cotangent squared plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared. Now in these examples, we're going to apply what we just learned to transform sine x times cotangent of x to cosine of x. Or in another way, we're trying to simplify a trick expression. OK, so we have sine of x times cotangent. We know that cotangent of x is cosine of x divided by sine of x. So I'm going to replace that here. Instead of cotangent, I write cosine of x over sine of x. And as you see, we are able to simplify cross 
find a vector on top and the one in the bottom. They cancel each other. So what is left here? Just cosine of x is left here. And that's exactly what we are expecting. So this is how we simplify this expression. Now let's practice the next one here. Sine of x times secant of x times cotangent of x. We want to change this to 1. So let's start writing. Sine of x. Secant was 1 over cosine of x. And cotangent was cosine of x divided by sine of x. Now let's see, are we able to simplify anything? The cosine on top will cancel the one in the bottom. And this sign on top will cancel the one in the bottom. Notice here, if I don't have a denominator, that means basically the denominator was 1. So this is on top, this one in the bottom, they cancel each other. And as you see, there's nothing left other than 1. So this is equal to 1. Now let's work on something else here. Cosecant of x minus secant squared. We want to change it to this form. First of all, if I have cosecant of x minus secant of x, this is similar to the identity that we have learned before, I a minus b squared. This is a minus b times itself. So we're going to use the same thing here. It's basically cosine of x minus secant of x times itself. So what I need to do here is to distribute and start multiplying these parentheses together. So the first one, cosine times cosine, it will be cosine of x times cosine of x. That's the first one. Then we have cosine of x times negative secant. So it will be negative cosine of x times secant of x. Next, we have this one that we're going to distribute. So it's negative secant times cosine. I can write it as cosine of x times secant. We know that we can switch the two factors when we are multiplying. And then we have negative secant, excuse me, we have negative secant times negative secant, which will be positive secant of x times secant of x. Okay, now cosine times cosine is cosine squared of x. Negative cosecant, uh, I'm sorry, negative cosine times secant minus negative cosine times secant. You see, these two are like terms. Cosine secant, cosine secant. We have two of them, so we can combine them, which will be minus two cosine of x times secant of x. Plus, next one is secant times secant. It will be secant of x squared. Let's have a closer look at what we have here. Cosine and secant are multiplied together. Cosine of x times secant of x. But we know that secant is already reciprocal of cosine. So this will be cosine of x times 1 over cosine of x. So they can cancel each other. And it will be just equal to 1. So this means this part is just 1. So it's simplified to 1. Now let's see what else do we have here. Now we have cosine squared of x minus 2 plus secant squared of x. This is what we have. So from here, we want to reach to tangent squared minus sine squared. We have cosine squared and secant squared. How do I change them to tangent and sine? So we need to see if we have any identity, identity that can change cosine to sine. Let's go here uh, to the previous one. We had the Pythagorean theorem. Let's see if we can use this to change cosine to sine. 
So I'm going to write that here. Pythagorean theorem here says cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x is equal to 1. So if I move the If I move the sine squared to the other side by subtracting sine squared from both sides, these two will cancel, and cosine squared of x will be equal to 1 minus sine squared of x. So if at this point, we were able to change cosine squared to 1 minus sine squared. So instead of this, I'm going to write 1 minus sine squared of x. Okay, and then I'm going to write minus 2. Now, how about secant squared? Are we able to change this to tangent? Again, if we go back to the Pythagorean identity, we had secant squared equal to 1 plus tangent squared. So I'm going to use the same thing here. Let me write that here for you. 1 plus tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x. So we are using this here. Instead of secant squared, I'm going to write 1 plus tangent square of x. So this was one identity that we used, and this one was another one that we used here in order to change uh, cosine and secant to sine and tangent. Now we can simplify. Let's see what do we have here. We have one, another one here, which will be 2 and a negative 2 here. So they can all cancel each other. Now what do we have? We have tangent squared minus sine squared. That's exactly what we were looking for. Tangent squared minus sine squared of x. So this is how we can reach from this side to this one. Now let's work on the next example that we have here. We have tangent of x plus cotangent of x. We want to change this to cosecant times secant. So let's see what do we have here. We have tangent of x. We know that tangent is sine of x over cosine of x. And also we know cotangent is cosine of x over sine of x. Now let's try to combine these two fractions, we want to add them. We know that if we have fractions, we want to add them, we need to find the common denominator. The common denominator for these two will be sine x times cosine, because they don't have anything in common, so we need to consider the common denominator as multiple of these two bottoms. So cosine of x times sine of x, this is our common denominator. Okay, so if I want to have common denominator for the first fraction, I need to multiply the bottom by sine of x. So I need to multiply the bottom by sine of x. But whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the same thing to the top as well. So I multiply top and the bottom by sine of x. Now, for the second fraction, if I want to have this common denominator, I need to multiply the bottom by cosine of x. Whatever I do to the bottom, I have to do the same thing to the top as well. Okay, so let's see what do we have now. I'm going to simplify that. The first fraction will be sine of x times cosine of x in the bottom. And top, we have sine x times sine x, which will be sine squared of x plus the second one. The denominator is, again, sine of x times cosine of x. And the top is cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared of x. Now, what do we have? We have two fractions with the same denominator. And we want to add them. We're going to keep the denominator, write one denominator here, sine of x times cosine of x. And the top is sine squared of x plus cosine squared of x. Is this familiar for you? 
Yes, we know that sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. That's the Pythagorean identity. So the top is just equal to 1. We have 1 over sine of x times cosine of x. I can separate this fraction in this form. 1 over sine of x times 1 over cosine of x. We know that is possible. These two fractions, if we multiply them back, top by top is 1, bottom by bottom is just sine times cosine. So that is a correct um, change here that we did. Now, what is 1 over sine? It's cosecant of x. It's reciprocal of cosecant. 1 over cosine is reciprocal of secant. And that's exactly what we were looking for. The second part was cosecant of x times secant, and we proved that. So this was today's lesson. We just learned how to use some trig identities to simplify and transform um, trig expressions. Have a great day.